How's it going guys? My name is Matt, you're watching Code Tech and Tutorials. Today I want to talk a little bit about how to learn programming in a general theory. Now, I uh, was watching some uh, some Lex podcast. I'm sure you're familiar with this guy if you're into programming at all. He does kind of an engineering podcast. I'll leave a link to it. Anyways, in one of his clips and uh, interview with Charles Isbell and Michael Littman, they were discussing how to learn programming. I thought this was really interesting because... Well, basically, they kind of had the a lot of the same thoughts that I already kind of had, and I thought maybe, you know, a lot of people don't really know this, that are trying to learn, that watch my channel, and this kind of spells it out. So I just want to kind of react to this, give my thoughts, and maybe we can all learn something about how we should go about learning programming. Okay, so here is the question that prompts the whole thing. I'm going to let it play. What advice do you have for people that want to learn how to program or want to either taste this little? Okay, so what advice would you give people that want to learn how to program, basically? Skill sets or discipline. And listen to how, I'm not sure who's talking. It's either Charles or Michael. I'm not sure which is which, to be honest. Or try to see if uh, it feels, well, one of the math. Okay, okay I missed it. Sorry, here we go. Life or the end. He asks, what stage are they in or what stage where are they at in life? How in, in their own life. It's really quiet. What stage of life are they in? What stage of life are they in? That's the first question he asked uh, for the person who was asking the question, how do you learn programming? And that's a really good question. He goes into it some later. But basically what uh, he says is you kind of need to know how the person thinks because there's like, it really depends a lot. Like, do you already know Boolean logic? Are you good with logic? Do you do you not even like get that at all? Or you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of little intermediate steps. And one of the big takeaways here is to start small. Don't try to do some big thing all at once. But starting small is huge. So let's see if we can get another few uh, good clips here. Okay, so here's a little important part i think that i agree with so you know my advice if you're early on is you know you've got the internet there are lots of people there to give you the information find someone who cares about this remember they've been doing it for a very long time take it slow learn the little pieces get excited about it and then there we go yes understand that most people that are teaching it have a lot of experience with it now like everybody it's all subjective like anybody could watch some of my videos and say oh this guy's a complete noob but i know what i've done i know what i'm capable i know what jobs i've landed with my current coding skills and i'm pretty happy with it you know so uh sure that's that's the thing so when i'm teaching i don't expect like everybody to understand everything i always try to explain all the little steps but he said something that I think I can learn a lot, and that's to get excited about it. I'm kind of to the point where I'm not very excited about the basic stuff anymore, and I'm always trying to get to something huge and getting overwhelmed. So I feel like I could definitely learn some lessons here, but that's that's it. Just start small, and you yeah, you do have to be excited about it because something like mentally clicks when you're excited about things. It's like you learn better when you're excited. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed that, but if you're not interested in something, it just doesn't sink in as well. At least that happens to me. Okay, let's continue a little bit and see what else he says here. Then keep the big project you want to build in mind. You'll get there soon enough because as a wise man once said, life is long. Sometimes it doesn't seem that long, but it is long. Keep your big project in mind because life is long. It doesn't seem that long, but it is long. That's interesting. You always hear people say like life is short. In the grand scheme of things it is, but as far as building things, yeah, you can do amazing things in a lifetime. I agree with that. So that's cool that yeah, I think he's right. You start small, you get excited about the small stuff, you learn how to piece it together, you try to work towards something big. That sounds about right for programming or doing really kind of anything, you know. Another thing that they get into a little bit is talking about languages, what language to start with and all that. You always hear about new people starting out and being like, I don't know what language to go with, what do I learn with? And really, what it comes down to is it doesn't really matter. It's like what one what one motivates you to learn or what one's designed for what you're trying to do for what your end goal is so that's where it's at for me like you know wanting to get into graphics and low-level programming for 
basically performance reasons. C++ was like the way to go for me, and I've stuck with it, and I'm happy with it. Um, but he does talk about, let's just listen here for a second. That lets you kind of see how the thing works, and that's fine too. They're all fine. It almost doesn't matter. But there are people who spend a lot of time thinking about how to build uh, languages that get people in. Okay, so he says it almost doesn't matter, but yeah, there's there's a lot of a lot of people spend a lot of time trying to design languages that are really easy, like with automatic garbage collection, so you don't have to think about as many things, and that's that's pretty important. Uh, but yeah, in general, you just got to kind of go with one. It almost doesn't matter because uh, you may have heard this before, and this seems to be pretty true. Once you're good at one language, the rest become pretty easy because a lot of the concepts overlap especially for like software design theory and stuff. A lot of those just overlap. So you really only have to learn some new syntax and kind of how the the language works a little bit, but the rest of the stuff you already know. So you just kind of need a language to dive into to learn all the core concepts. And I think they end up saying Python's a good one. Uh, I would agree, but uh, you know, whatever whatever gets you motivated. The question is, are you trying to get in and figure out what it is, or do you already know what you want? And that's why I asked you what stage of life people are in, because if you're different stages of life, you, you, would, you would attack it differently. Yeah, that's really big. So I think the biggest thing, honestly, the biggest thing is just to do it. You just like start today, start now, start as soon as you have free time. It's like the more you do, the, hmm. let's, let's spin it on a positive way. The sooner you start, the more that like base knowledge starts accumulating. And I think that was really big for me. Like I actually started programming late in my life compared to most people. You know, a lot of people hear about a lot of people saying I programmed as a kid and stuff. And I actually sort of did without knowing it. Because uh, as soon as we got a computer, I was like hacking away at that thing all the time, taking it over the, you know, my brother could never get on because I was always messing with it. No, I'd let him on. I'm kidding. But I basically kind of learned as much as I could as, just because I've like messed with the computer so much. So I ended up doing some scripting stuff, just following tutorials and stuff. And that's sort of considered coding, but I didn't really realize I was coding until later in life. So yeah, I would just say start as soon as you can. That's probably the biggest thing. And here's another really interesting part. They're talking about like how it's all really complicated, but it's also really simple. And I totally agree. There's only, there's like a very, there's very few things you actually need to know when you're programming. There's, I think they, he says some of them here and there might be, it might be a little more complicated than he's making it out to be, but also it's a different way of thinking. So let's just listen to it for a second here and, and uh, see what they say. Yeah. I was teaching intro to CS as a favor. And it was very funny because I'd go in every single time and I, I would think to myself, how am I possibly going to fill up an hour and a half? Oh, okay, here he's talking about lecturing. He was doing a little intro to CS lecture, and he was trying to figure out how he's going to fill up an hour and a half. But talking about for loops, right? And th there wasn't enough time. There wasn't enough time. That exactly. That's what happens when I do my tutorials. Honestly, I think ah, I can bang this out in ten minutes, fifteen minutes. And then after I'm like blabbing for a while, I look at how long I've been recording, and it's like sometimes 40, 50 minutes. And I'm like, geez, I thought this was only take 10 minutes. It's were pretty simple stuff, actually. So yeah, while it's pretty simple, there's a lot to go into and there's a lot of scenarios, but just to like teach the base, it's like variables, functions, and kind of how the memory works and you know how references work if you need references, uh, but just how like the equals and assignment works and all that. So there's only a few things really to learn, but there's just like, so much little possibilities of directions you can go with just for loops and if else you know it's it's pretty it's pretty interesting let's listen a little bit more it took me a while to realize this right there are only three things right there's reading from a variable writing to a variable and conditional branching reading from a variable writing to a variable and conditional branching yeah, I'd say that covers a lot of stuff. The conditional branching is very broad. Like, I guess that covers the loops, the whiles, all the if else, and going to different areas and setting variables. Because, yeah, generally what you do, you know, it depends on the program, but a lot of times uh, you're just going to be setting variables and then running your current state based off of those variables. That's how a lot of things work. They just have like their settings. And then it runs. And as you go, you change the settings or process input. 
And, you know, that's, that's the loop of a lot of programs. It's pretty straightforward. Everything else is syntactic sugar. Everything else is syntactic sugar. Yeah, there's, that's, I don't know. It's hard to say he's wrong, you know? Uh, a little exaggerated, but yeah, it, it's kind of true. Right. The syntactic sugar matters, but that's it. And when I say that's it, I don't mean it's simple. I mean, it's hard. See, now, see, that's where the trick is. Like, it sounded simple for a second, but then suddenly it flips to it's hard. So what's hard about it? Like, mm -hmm. conditional branching, loops, variable. Those are really hard concepts, so you shouldn't be discouraged by this. Here's the... Huh, yeah. You know, I feel like these concepts become intuitive. They do become intuitive, but at first, when you haven't seen them and haven't messed with them a whole lot, they are a bit daunting and hard. Yeah, I agree. This is a simple experiment. I'm going to ask you a question now. You ready? Uh -oh. X equals three. Okay. Okay. This is interesting. So he's going to say some things and, and check see and just like the knowledge of how assignments work is interesting mm -hmm. y equals four x equals three y equals four okay. what is x what is x well x is three of course right three what is y four y equals I'm gonna s mess up. <laughs> no that's oh it's, it's easy to do. y equals x now you say y equals x y equals x what is y and what is y now so that's pretty interesting. And, and it depends. Is it a reference? Is it, you know, when you're changing variables, you can either, you know, they're either in their own storage area or you're holding a reference to another one. So if the main one changes, then all the ones that were referencing it, because Y could be a reference to X. So if X changes, then Y changes, or it could just copy the value. And if X changes, Y stays the same. So there's a lot of little stuff like that, that takes kind of wrapping your head around and, a lot of a lot of languages just don't deal with that. They just abstract that away and don't even let you mess with it. Okay, I thought this was another little interesting antidote. Sorry about the green screen. I'm missing a light because long story doesn't matter. But I'm aware that my green screen is not perfect right now. All right, let's listen to this little antidote. It's it's interesting. Anything about programming on those very basic things is the the the, the very basics are not often made explicit. There we go. Okay, this is something I try to handle in all my tutorials. The very basics are often not made explicit. So there's like a newcomer will often hit some tutorial and think, okay, I'm gonna learn all this stuff. But then the basics fly at them and they're just like, I, <laughs> I can't, I can't, how do I continue when I don't even know what the heck this little thing that it is assumed knows. So I don't know, just something I've, I've always, I strongly realized when I started programming too. And it's interesting to see other programmers that are pretty experienced ag agree and, and know that's a thing. It definitely is. Let's listen a little bit more to what Lex has to say here. Which is actually what drives everybody away from basically any discipline, but programming is just another one. Like even a simpler version of the equal sign that I kind of forget is in mathematics. Okay, yeah. So he's getting into it. You know, the, you got to know the exact details of the basics. And how the equal sign works if you're doing a reference what it's like in your language there's a lot of stuff like that well that's going to do it for this video hope you enjoyed hope you're uh, doing well in your journey to learn programming or getting better at programming or video editing or whatever you do here or whatever you're here for this channel i appreciate all of you whether you're here for me personally for the uh, videos about coding or for the videos about video editing Speaking of, I do have a tutorial coming up about DaVinci Resolve 17. I've been using it for a while, been practicing, and I'm going to do some basics on DaVinci, so look forward to that. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much. Special shout out to my patrons. This video is a bit uh, live casted, so I'm not going to put them up here, but I will put links down below. I appreciate you guys a lot and hope you have a great time. I don't just realize what screen I uh, paused on. Thanks again. Peace out, guys.